Uh, start recording then. All right. Welcome everybody to a glorious uh, Chem 150 discussion slash office hour session. Um, I'm Brad Neal, University of Indianapolis, and if you're watching this, you probably already knew that. Um, so... Yeah, this is really just the time for if you have questions, I've got answers. And um, if um, you don't have questions, I've got practice problems that we can go through. But I'm be more than happy to talk through questions that you have at any point in time. Um, I have one question. Yeah, let's let's um, go with it. How do you know whether the work in a problem, the value of the work is going to be positive or negative? All right, so that's a good question. How do you know whether the work in a problem is gonna be positive or negative? Um, so what I'm gonna do here is, if you can see the screen that's got the uh, questions on it, um, or that portion of the screen. So let's take a, let's just uh, talk through uh, maybe questions one, two, and um, four, because question three is kind of telling you whether work is positive or negative. Sound like a plan? Okay, cool. So um, here when question number one, it's saying that a gas is absorbing the uh, is absorbing heat and it's doing work. So you're when you're doing these problems, you have to you always have to identify what is your system and what is your surroundings. So almost every single time the gas is going to be your system. Um, and the way that this one is written up, it is not explicitly, but it is implicitly telling you that the gas is the system. And this is where that thesaurus uh, part of the SAT comes into play. So it's telling you for the heat that is absorbing heat so the heat is coming in to the system and if energy is coming into the system we're going to give it a positive value and if energy is leaving a system then we're going to give it a negative value so heat because heat is getting absorbed and absorbed is another way of saying entering into the gas heat's getting the positive but because of with the work it's saying it does work so I always think of a little cylinder and I'm just you can make one with your hand right and the gas is doing work on the surroundings so because it's saying it's doing the work it says it does uh, that amount of it does the 29 kilojoules so the does is kind of a uh, another term for is expanding. Because in these problems, we're almost always talking about a uh, situation where the gas is in a cylinder and then that cylinder head is going up or down, kind of like how we had in the notes. Since it is doing work on the surroundings, we're giving it the negative symbol or the negative sign. So there in question number one, we've got the negative, we'd have a negative 29 kilojoules of work. Did any of that make any sense? Yes. Okay, you wanna try it here in question number two, just thinking it through? Yeah. All right. Being okay, so, yep, you, so the, uh, the heat is being released, so it's going to get negative. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's going from the system into the surroundings, so heat is negative. What do you think about the work? It's going to be positive. Okay, so it's saying work is, um, while 104 kilojoules of work is done on it. Yeah, so if we think about that cylinder, 
the done on it is meaning it's being compressed. So the surroundings are pushing in on the system. Work is being done onto the system. So yes, it is going to be a positive 104 kilojoules of work. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. I want to try number four. I'm going to scroll number four up just a little bit. So, so let's just talk through because really, I guess, or I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You go for it. Um, it's just going to say that in 4A, the heat would be positive. Yep. And the work would be negative. So. Or it, no, because it's being done on the system. Yeah. It would be positive. Right. So in 4A, we're saying that we've got that it's absorbing energy. So the system is taking energy in in the form of heat. So, yep, that's a positive. And then uh, 35 joules of energy is, of work is done on it being the system. So, yes, the 35 joules would be a positive as well. How about B? So, so you're saying in B, you think that the heat is going to be negative. Why are you thinking that in 4B, that the heat is going to be negative? Oh, no, no, because it's absorbing it. It's going to be positive. That was my bad. <laughs> yeah, so it's saying that it's going to be absorbing it. Yep. Yeah. And so that absorbing the 35 joules of heat is indicative of a positive heat value. Yeah. The work is going to be negative because it's not being done on the system. Okay, so now we have a, a situation where work is not being done on the system. The system is doing work on the surroundings. So if we think about that little container, it's expanding out, right? And so energy is flowing from the system into the surroundings. So yeah, that 72 there. 72 joules of work being performed is going to have a negative value on it. Yep. Does that help? That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And that's where, like, there's just going to be a, like eight or ten different ways that you can write that kind of thing out. Um, work is being performed on, work is being performed by, um, expanding, uh, compressing, different things like that. And that's where you have to think like, all right, what does that mean? What does that word mean? What is a, a similar word? And then you're free to go to solve the problem. That is, yeah. All right. What else can I help you with? Do you have any specific questions? Uh, no, no specific ones. Okay. All right. Not hearing anything crazy specific. Um, I think that in the first discussion video, uh, I think we left off. Um, we finished question number five. Um, so I was going to go ahead and start working on question number six and start trying to talk through how to do, uh, six, seven, and eight. We haven't in the, uh, videos, we haven't talked through, um, how to do, uh, question number nine yet, but if we get through six and seven or six, seven and eight pretty easily, then we'll, we might kick over to nine and talk a little bit about it and then also lecture on it uh, come tomorrow. Sound like a plan? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's something anyways. Well, I guess we'll go with that, right? <laughs> All right, so number six. We've got a sample of a gas, and uh, we are saying that the gas is at 15 atmospheres. 
um, and then the volume of said gas is 10 liters. The gas is allowed to expand against a constant external pressure of two atmospheres at a constant temperature. Ultimately, what we're looking for is work in the units of kilojoules for the gas expansion. All right. So here for number six, we're going to use that definition of work for gas expansion that we've talked about where it's work equals negative P. And this is, again, where I strongly can encourage people to write P external. Um, and I would say... Yeah, P external is going to equal, or I'm sorry, uh, work is equal negative P external times delta V. And our delta V here is going to be our volume final minus volume initial. So in order to figure out work, we need these two things or these three things. We are given in the problem a, because, and because of the way we wrote this out, specifically this external, the problem is telling us two different pressures. Well, which one of these pressures is our external pressure? The two ATM. The two ATM, yeah. So work is going to equal a negative two atmospheres, and I'm not writing in the decimal places, and I should have. So I'll just go ahead and change that real quick. 2.00, because that's what the problem gave us. ATM. And now we need that final, vol final volume and initial volume. Does the problem give us what the final volume and the initial volume are? It does give us the initial. And so what is our initial volume going to be? 10 liters. 10.0 liters. That's right. But does, does it give us the final volume explicitly? Yeah. No, it doesn't. But do we have enough information to figure out what the final volume was going to be? Yeah, how, what kind of reasoning do we need to think through to figure out what that final volume is going to be? Wonderful question. Yeah, yeah, I, th I thought it was a pretty good question too. So this is going to be where we're going to want to combine the information from the gases chapter here with our understanding of thermochemistry. Because we're dealing with a gas, all the stuff that we did uh, with the gas laws and the ideal gas law, um, all that stuff is still valid, right? Mm -hmm. So from our gas laws chapter, we had the ideal gas law PV equals NRT. Is the number of moles changing? As part of number six, no, it's not. Is the no, is the temperature changing? No, no, it isn't. So, the things that are going to be changing are between really scenario one and then after the expansion scenario two. It's just the pressure and the volume. So it almost calls to mind an equation something like. P1, V1 equals P2, V2, doesn't it? Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, man, I thought we were done with that. I'm like, nope, we're not done with that. So if we have our P1, V1 equals P2, V2, by the way, which law is this? Boyle's law, yeah. Now we just get to plug and chug in our numbers that the situation gives us because this volume two right here, that's going to end up being our 
final volume. Yeah, that's right. So for vol for uh, pressure one, we said it was uh, 15.0 ATM. For volume one, we said it was going to be that 10.0 liters. That's going to equal pressure two, which what will our second pressure be? Okay, it's going to be 2 ATM. That's right. And we know that it's going to be the 2 ATM because the problem is telling us that uh, the gas expands against a constant pressure of two atmospheres. So if we think about that, and I'm going to just try to draw it here. If we think about that example where we've got ourselves a cylinder and we put a piston here, if P external is 2 ATM. Wow, that's a really terrible handwriting. Sorry about that. The gas inside is going to expand until its pressure equals the external pressure. So we know that at its final pressure, the gas inside here will equal the external pressure. And this works because this is a piston. And the piston is allowed to move up and down. And the wording of this problem. So, yep, so pressure here is gonna be the 2.0 uh, ATM. And we then solve for volume two. So volume two is gonna equal I'm sorry, what'd you say? 75 liters. 75 liters is what I had too, or as well. So 75.0 liters. Cool. And so then this value ends up being the same thing as V final. So 75.0 liters. And is going to equal delta V. Delta V goes right into that original equation. So we can rewrite all of this to make it a little bit easier to read. And we could say negative P external delta V equals a negative 2.00 atmospheres times that 75 point oh liters minus ten point oh liters and we end up with negative one thirty yeah ATM. that's right so we're gonna end up with a negative one hundred thirty liters times atmospheres but the question didn't ask for liters times atmospheres as the final unit, it asked for uh, kilojoules. kilojoules. Yeah. So we're going to have to go into a situation where we're going to need to convert that. So that negative 130 liters times atmospheres. We have to pull out the conversion factor that we read in the book, which is that 101.3 joules is equivalent to one liter times atmosphere or atmosphere time liter. If we do that, units cancel there. But joules is not the same thing as kilojoules. So let's do our thousand joules per one kilojoule. And we get a final answer of Negative 13.17, which would, would round to. 0. 0.2. Yeah, negative 13.2 kilojoules. And so then, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's our final answer. So let's analyze that question here for a second. 
what are the key things that we need to keep track of in order to get this kind of question right? different types of pressure. Okay, so we have a situation where in this kind of question we have different pressures. Yeah, so we're gonna have the starting pressure of the gas and a final pressure of the gas. And we need to make sure that we're using the external pressure as part of our work equation. So we have to make sure that we use the right pressure there. Yep. What else do we have to have in order to answer this kind of question? Yeah, we're going to have to use our gas laws. Um, and we're going to run into problems uh, later on down the line where um, you'll be able to, you're going to be able, you're going to have to use your gas laws. We'll just say it um, just more generically right now. You, having that mastery is going to be uh, incredibly helpful. Yeah. Does that problem make sense overall now that we talked through it? A hush falls, falls over the crowd. Uh, I might have lost people. Hope not. No. I shook my head. I don't know if you can see. Oh, no. Let me try to change that up. There we go. Hey, I can see. I can see people now. What the heck? Yeah. Who knew that was even an option? All right. Man, that makes things a lot more personal. So far, I've just been, like, staring at this webcam, and it's been weird. But now that I, like, actually have people's faces, hey, look at that. That personal connection. Okay. Want to do uh, question number seven? I mean, want to versus will we, right? Okay. Are you all able to see the stuff that I'm writing clearly enough for you? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. All right, number seven. I'm going to scroll it up just a little bit above my shiny forehead. Um, need to get some foundation or something going on here. It kind of reduced the glare. All right. Number seven. We've got ourselves a piston and it's performing work. Oh, it's giving us work in that fun leaders times atmosphere unit that nobody hardly ever uses. So that's going to be interesting. Um, it's the piston is performing work on the surroundings. Um, and it's expanding, um, while the sand the cylinder it is while the cylinder in which it is placed expands from 10 liters to 25 liters well that's a fun sentence at the same time 45 joules of heat is transferred from the surroundings to the system against what pressure was the piston working wow let's unpack that one all right so we've got a work We've got pressures and we've got volumes. What do you think might be the right equation to start with? One for work. Yeah. So work is going to equal our negative pressure external delta B. Yeah. That's right. So what do, from the question here, what do we know and what are we looking for? Okay, so we know the work in units of liters times atmospheres. So we don't know the pressure. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we've got that work is going to be the 210 um, liters times atmospheres. And it's asking us about that pressure. So against what pressure was the piston working? Half of question number seven here is just getting past all the the bad English. Uh, 
in the way that it was written out. So, I mean, being honest, right? So pressure external is kind of what we're looking for. It's not kind of, it is what we're looking for. So what do we do about Delta V? It does give us our volumes, yeah. So what's gonna be our our final volume and what's gonna be our initial volume? Final's 25, initial's 10 liters. And yeah, that's right. So it's telling us it's expanding from 10 liters to 25. So the final's gonna be the 25 liters and the initial is gonna be the 10 based off the wording of it. All right. So we could throw that into our equation and we can say the 25 liters minus the 10 liters and then we end up with this lovely equation right here. We rearrange, we do the stuff in the parentheses first. So the 25 minus the 10 then we divide that number uh, into the 210 liters times atmospheres. Now, question. From the way that it is written in the, in the question, do we know what numeric value work is supposed to have? Is it, uh, or I'm sorry, what, uh, we know the numeric value. Do we know what sign? work is supposed to have? Um, it should be negative, correct? Yeah, it should be negative. Why should it be negative? Because it's performing on the surroundings. Yep. We have a situation here where work is being performed on the surroundings. That's absolutely right. So when we wrote this uh, 210 liters times atmospheres, we should really put, wolf. that's the world's worst negative sign. We should really put a negative sign out there in front of that. Yep. And this is an example of, um, it will, you can use your words when you're answering questions to denote a negative sign, or you can write the negative sign as the answer. Um, I used to tell classes, um, and I think it makes sense to some people and completely confuses other people. So, um, if you need to just skip this part of the video, uh, by all means do it. Uh, when I was doing general chemistry, I would oftentimes find the numeric value of W or of heat or internal energy, et cetera. And I'd get confused on whether it was a negative or it was a positive. And so I would go ahead and write out as part of my answer, um, work being performed on the surroundings. Well, numerically, I could have just written out a negative number, but by saying, by adding in that part at the end of saying work on the surroundings, it lets the instructor know, hey, you understand the physical, uh, what's actually happening, like the physicality of the reaction. Um, and so then if you didn't write the negative sign in, you know, my professors always let me get away with that. Um, and realistically I would too, because if you're able to put on there, uh, an answer, um, in words indicating the proper flow of energy, Hey, that's really what I'm more interested in. So, uh, yeah, if you watch the video, there's a nice little hint and for everybody live watching, well, you just heard it too. It's very exciting. So now that I have stalled, what value are we getting out for pressure external? Positive, yep, because we're going to have a negative 210 divided by that uh, negative 15, because we can't forget about the, um, we can't forget about the negative sign in front of the uh, pressure external. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we are going to end up with a positive value for pressure external, and I calculated it out to be 14. 
what would our units be here? ATM. Atmospheres, yeah, ATM. Because the leaders get in from the uh, unit of work get canceled out. Now, hopefully here with question number uh, seven, you can see how um, we could have made this question one layer more difficult by giving you the work in the units of joules or in kilojoules. Then you would have had to convert the work in joules or kilojoules into the liters times atmospheres, but then you would have solved the problem the same way. All right. deal with the heat. Ah, yeah, so what's the deal with the heat? Thoughts? Red herring, maybe? Oh, yeah, heat's a red herring here. That's right. What could we use heat and the value of work to solve for? Yeah, so we could use the heat that's given here along with the value of work for this uh, process to figure out the change in internal energy, delta U or delta E. Um, but for this question, it's asking us what's the external pressure. So we don't truly need that heat value. Yep, yep, red herring or... Um, an Anton's gun. That's a, a play reference. So if you don't know what that is, it's kind of a fun little rabbit hole to spend 15 minutes on, on Wikipedia. All right. Any other questions about number seven? Good call out on the heat. All right. Hearing none. Want to talk about question number eight? I mean, again, I know that the answer is no, um, but you're here, I'm here. Let's talk about question number eight. So number eight is, um, and you guys have heard me talk about these kinds of questions in class. Question number eight is um, one of those that I kind of use to help separate out the A's from the B's. Um, on the spicy scale, we're, I mean, Maybe we're at a ghost pepper, maybe. Um, like this is fairly spicy. We're, we've got a bunch of things going on and we have to keep track of uh, a fair number of moving parts, not only in terms of energy flow, but also in terms of chemistry as well. Um, so let's uh, start diagramming question number eight. So we have one mole of hydrogen, or I'm sorry, one mole of water, um, gas. Huh, it's weird that it tells us that's a gas at one atmosphere and 100 degrees Celsius, and it's occupying a volume of 30.6 liters. Okay, so cool, that's fun. When one mole of water, gas, is condensed to one mole of water, liquid. Huh, okay, so we're going from a gas phase to a liquid phase at the uh, same pressure and temperature. It tells us that uh, heat is released. Well, that kind of makes sense. Um, so if you've ever uh, like put your hand over a boiling pot um, of water, I don't recommend that. Um, but it, you've kind of feel like, ooh, you're like this is hot. What's happening is the steam is releasing its energy into you, and then it is condensing. It's going back to the liquid phase. So you are absorbing the energy that the, the excess energy that the steam has. So when it, when people get scalded, they get uh, steam burns. Um, it's because you're releasing a, uh, usually a ton of energy very quickly from the steam into the human body. Um, which results in a, a burn. Okay, so we are dumping 40.6 kilojoules of heat pretty quickly. Okay, if the density of water, oh man, now we're getting into like density too. Good grief. If the density of water uh, and as, as a liquid at this temperature and pressure is 
that number calculate internal energy for the condensation of one mole of water at one atmosphere and 100 degrees Celsius. Good Guga Muga. We got a lot of moving parts here. All right, can I make a suggestion before we get started? I'm gonna just doing it. All right, so here for number eight, my suggestion is because we're actually having a physical change occurring and we know that it's a physical change occurring because it's telling us that the water is condensing. Let's, we're going from water as a gas to water as a liquid. I suggest writing that out up at the top and to start with so that you keep track of uh, the fact that you are dealing with a physical change occurring because that's definitely going to come into play the other th once you have that then i would start thinking about the other kinds of equations that you might need in order to get to whatever it's asking for so what is the what is the ultimate answer that we're looking for in this equation or mm, let me try that sentence again what's the ult what ultimately is the question asking for Yeah, we're looking for that change in internal energy. So we're ultimately looking for delta U, which we've said is the same thing as delta E. Yeah. Do we have any equations that could help us figure out the change in internal energy? Well, there's just the heat and work. That's it. The only thing we've got at this point in the game is just in change in internal energy equals heat plus work. That's right. If we look here at the problem, are we given either the change in heat or are we given and or are we given the change in work as this uh, process is occurring. And specifically, the process is condensation. Condensation. Any thoughts? Do we have either heat or work given to us in number eight? Um, it talks about the amount of heat release. Yeah. So it's telling us that we've got 40.66 kilojoules of heat released as part of this process of condensation. Yeah, so our system, the water, is re releasing heat to its surroundings. And like I said, in the case of a burn, you are the surroundings, and so it releases heat to you. In the case of not a burn, it's just releasing the heat into whatever else it's coming in contact with. So we know that Q, whoa, not an equal sign. There we go. Q for this problem, for the process of condensation with all the values given to us is gonna be 40.66 kilojoules. Yep. We don't have an explicit value of work given to us. But we're given a bunch of pressures, and we're given a volume. What do we know about how to figure out the work done by a gas or work done to a gas? 
Do we know any equations for that? Negative pressure external times the difference in volume. Yeah, so we know that the work even for a, that a gas is doing or being done to a gas is pressure external times delta V and that whole uh, value being a negative. Yep. So do we have pressure external? One, yeah. For this entire process, we're saying that we're only operating at one atmosphere of pressure. So we could say the negative 1.0 atm now we have to figure out the volume final minus volume initial in the first sentence we're given a volume we're given the volume of the water as a gas is that volume useful or is that just something there to throw us off the scent? Could we do the P1, V1 equals P2, V2? Okay, that's a good idea. So that volume that is given to us, that 30.6, corresponds to the volume at the beginning because we're saying at the initial here, initially our water is a gas. So that 30.6 uh, is going to be our initial. But the trick about P1V1 equals P2V2, that Boyle's law, you have to have a gas as both your starting and as your end state. And specifically with condensation, our end state is not going to be a gas anymore. It's going to be a liquid. So we won't be able to use P1V1 equals P2V2 to figure out the final volume of our water. Do we know anything else about the water that could potentially help us when it's in its liquid form? Because liquid is when it's in its final state. Okay, we know it's density, that's right. We do know it's density. That's gonna be pretty useful. Cause, we also know we've got one mole of the stuff, right? So it's a quantity. If we have that quantity, can't we kick it into a mass of the water? Yeah, so we could do the one mole of water and then multiply that by the molar mass, the 18.02 grams of water. And here's where your density comes into play because what does density relate mass to? Density is defined as mass over volume. volume, right. So density is gonna explicitly relate our mass to our volume. So if we stopped right here with what we've got written out, the moles of water cancel and we'd be left with mass of water. If we use our density, specifically the 0 0.996 grams of water per one milliliter of water, 
now we got a situation where the mass is cancel and we have a volume of our liquid water. And that's the key. It's the l volume of the liquid water. But the volume of our liquid water as written, we can't use in our, an, an equation that relates our initial volume. Because our initial volume is in liters, we need our final volume to be in liters. So easy breezy lemon squeezy, thousand milliliters for one liter, cancel the milliliters. So at the end of all of this math, we're going to end up with the volume of our liquid water. Which, like, because it's just multiplying by one a whole bunch of times, right? Besides the density. You type it in, you should end up with a value that's around 0 0.0181. Oops. 1.81. Liters. Nope, not volume initial, volume final. So this is the volume of our liquid water and our liquid water is our end state of condensation. Does that thought process make sense? Cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a little tricky, right? Because you, you want to use P, P1V1 equals P2V2, Boyle's Law kind of stuff. But because it's condensation and we're undergoing a phase change, we can't use Boyle's Law. But you want to because it feels good, feels right, but it isn't right. And that's why I said at the very beginning of this problem to write out the, uh, the process that's undergoing specifically that gas to liquid. And that's why I ended up writing out condensation over there to the side because I know that that definition of condensation is a phase change. And since I'm doing that phase change, I then can't use P1V1 equals P2V2. But now we've got our volumes in the same units. So it becomes a situation of plug and chug. So work equals that negative. 1.0 atmospheres times final volume 0 0.0181 liters minus the initial volume of 30.6 liters and that's, that's going to be a crazy looking number right uh, when we do that 0 0.018 minus the 30.6 um, but it kind of makes sense because we're taking this gas and we're condensing it down into a little water droplet. It, it physically, it might make sense. The number might be kind of like whatever, but um, it, in a physical real world sense, hopefully it makes sense. Mm. So we end up with a numeric value that should be positive because we've got negative times a negative, and it's going to pretty much be... 30.6 liters times atmospheres. Cool. What should we do with this problem now? Turn the um, yeah. factor into joules. There, yeah. Yep. And then, um, Put that back into the internal energy equation. Yep. So now it becomes a situation where we're going to be doing this just like the other problems that we've done. So we're going to say that 30.6 liters times that 101.3 joules for every one liter times atmosphere. Going to end up with something around uh, 3.1 times 10 to the third joules 
for some reason I decided the scientific notation was cool to write it out like that. Um, and then if you kick that over to kilojoules, because Q is already in kilojoules, we should end up with something around 3.10 kilojoules. Which gives us then the final stuff that we need for delta E, the Q plus W. So Q, that negative 40.66 from what feels like forever ago when we start doing this problem, plus the value of work for the condensation of water. And we get the internal energy change of negative 37.56 or so kilojoules. Yeah, see, I said that was more like a ghost pepper on the spicy scale, right? But if we diagram it now after the fact, if we start asking ourselves, what are the key things that we need to know in order to be successful for this problem? Um, it's all stuff that we did in chapter one to figure out the volume, or I'm sorry, I guess it'd be chapter two, for the volume of our water. And it's then the same kind of stuff that we've just been doing for the change in internal energy here in the thermochem chapter. But it's a different way of combining everything. Does that make sense? Maybe, maybe a little bit, hopefully. Yeah, it's about as good as it's gonna write. I think you might have to sit down and go through that one a couple more times and um, just really, if I could really get you to focus in on how, like what are the keys that are telling me that I can't use Boyle's law? And then you remember, okay, I'm changing states of matter. I'm going from a gas to a liquid, so I can't use Boyle's law. Um, so how do I figure out the volume of a liquid? Because that's really like that whole middle section um, of this. All of this right here is how do you figure out the volume of a liquid? Okay, we are about at the hour mark. I'm more than happy to uh, answer any other questions, but since we really haven't talked about, um, in lecture anyways, the uh, concepts for question number nine, I feel like putting a pin in that one might be a good idea, but I, like I said, I'm more than happy, happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Let the record state that everybody looks like they're doing okay. Um, just kind of given just the general, eh, we're good here. So um, I guess if that's the case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call it for today. You're going to get an email from me later today uh, with information about quiz number four. So if you haven't done the uh, practice quiz, do go ahead and do that practice quiz. Uh, make sure that that's working for you and that you can go through there because I want you to find technical issues out now when it's just for extra credit points versus when we do the real point quiz. The real point quiz is probably going to go live uh, after 1 o'clock because the practice quiz ends about 1 o'clock. I'm going to go through it, make sure that there's no issues um, technically on my side. Then I'll kick it out to everybody live. Then I'll kick the quiz number four to everybody live, including the uh, instructions. But I anticipate the instructions being the exact same as what um, showed up for the practice quiz. Um, the I've got everybody's peer review papers scanned. I've just got to get them out to everybody. Um, so that I'm going to be working on that today, um, as well as making sure that everybody has the explicit due dates for. Uh, all the upcoming assignments and assessments. But that's what I got.
please feel free to email me, call me, text me with all the information, uh, the emails, the phone number that I've posted feels like everywhere. Um, and let me know anything I can be doing on my end to help you guys during this transition. Um, cause it's crazy. And I just don't want the transition to be the thing that, uh, I don't, chemistry is hard enough. I don't want the transition to make it unnecessarily harder. All right. With that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit stop on said recording.